I'm going to talk about the non-surgical uh, management of hepatocellular carcinoma. Uh, these are my disclosures. Uh, so just a brief background again, uh, HCC being the sixth most common uh, uh, form of cancer worldwide and the third most frequent cause of cancer-related deaths. And in the U.S., the NCI estimates that about 31,000 new cases and 22,000 deaths in 2013. And as we discussed, about 20% of these patients are considered resectable and will get surgical resection. Uh, but contraindications uh, are significant portal hypertension, which is high pressure, uh, as uh, Dr. Schwartz talked about, in the portal system, and uh, some liver dysfunction. So what are the options for these patients that can't get uh, either resection or transplantation? So there's always the option of, of doing nothing, of, of providing supportive care. There's also systemic chemotherapy, depending on the stage of the uh, hepatocellular carcinoma. And then there are the local regional therapies, local regional uh, meeting, uh, confined to uh, a certain target. And so that includes thermal ablation, such as microwave and radio frequency ablation, as well as a new technology called uh, irreversible electroporation or nano knife, uh, transarterial chemoembolization for intermediate stage uh, patients, uh, com uh, comprised of conventional taste and drug eluding B taste. There's external beam radiation and uh, Y90 radio mobilization, which is a transarterial based therapy. And I'll discuss these in detail as we go on. So this is what we call the Barcelona uh, uh, Clinic uh, Staging System, the BCLC. And these are uh, categorized into very early, early and intermediate stage uh, uh, HCC and uh, the advanced, and these are the natural history of median overall survival based on uh, papers, and then uh, with curative therapies, the, uh, the, the advantage of providing local regional therapy and resection and transplantation. So the first stage um, I'm going to address with our therapies is the early stage PCLC, as uh, Dr. Schwartz alluded to, the child classification helps us with uh, expectations and, and patients. And again, solitary tumors, uh, up to three nodules. Um, uh, solitary tumor between uh, less than five or three nodules, up to three. Absence of what we call vascular invasion and absence of extra hepatic spread, spread outside of the liver. So as discussed, uh, this is the Milan criteria uh, that Dr. Schwartz had talked about. And the reason I talk about this is because uh, a lot of our therapies are based upon uh, uh, whether the patient is a surgical candidate or not. And so liver transplantation and, uh, has been uh, defined as what we call curative therapies along with resection and along with ablation. The problem with, uh, with uh, transplantation, as uh, Dr. Schwartz talked about, is that there is a long waiting list in uh, New York State, about 18 months. And so to let a tumor in the liver, let's say, uh, the cutoff for a solitary tumor is about five centimeters, and you have a tumor that's four, uh, you're gonna have to wait a year and a half. Um, certainly in that period, you can drop off the waiting list. So we use local regional therapies to try and bridge uh, uh, patients to that transplantation uh, period. So when we talk about thermal ablations, uh, we're talking about heating up, and simply put, heating up the tissue and burning the tumor. Uh, when we look at studies, anything above 50 degrees Celsius is when what we call uh, tissue coagulation occurs, or basically irreversible uh, charring, of, uh, heating of the tissue, what we call lethal heating. And that's what we try and achieve with our uh, uh, ablative technologies. So this is just a movie schematic showing a, a patient with a liver, and within the liver is uh, a tumor. Uh, and what we do is we use uh, image guidance, either a CT or ultrasound guidance, and through the skin, through a very small incision, uh, just enough to insert a needle, uh, we'll insert that needle and uh, target it into the center of the tumor, and then we'll turn on the machine, and it'll heat up uh, the tissue as well as the surrounding tissue. We try and get what we call margins, or the area around the tumor as well. So there are studies out there that have showed that uh, when we've done this percutaneously, the results have been very good for lesions of a certain size, less than three centimeters, uh, and 83% of the tumors has been shown to have uh, 
uh, destruction on pathologic correlation when they removed uh, that, that tumor and analyzed it under pathology. And again, this, these are just uh, schematics and pictures of the different probes that we use and the technology that's involved. Basically, again, putting it through the uh, skin and uh, heating up that tissue to cause that death. This is a case study from Mount Sinai where uh, uh, on the image with the arrow, or the pointer, uh, there's a bright area here, and on the second image, there's a relatively dark area. This is according to the ASOP guidelines, uh, where you don't need a biopsy, and with what we call arterial enhancement and venous delay, it's uh, parasitic carcinoma. It measured a little bit less than two centimeters in size. This patient was not a surgical candidate, and so it was referred to us for uh, an ablation. And this is what we call uh, a CAT scan. Uh, it slices through the body, uh, and you're looking from the feet towards the head. And uh, we got the culprit with a probe that was inserted through the skin. We don't open up the patients, but we uh, use image guidance to place our needles. Burn the area, and the patient came back for a four-week uh, follow-up imaging. You can see that now in the arterial phase, it's black. In the venous phase, it's black, which shows destruction of tissue because these uh, uh, images are based on enhancement or brightness. One of the tools that we use to help us uh, sometimes guide our therapies is what we call electromagnetic magnetic tracking device, or a GPS, to put it uh, simply. Uh, what we do is we place markers on patients, and it actually communicates with the satellite. And what the computer generates is what we would call coronal, sagittal, and axial reconstructions. Coronal meaning as if you're looking at a patient straight on, and sagittal when you look at a patient from the side. And you can see in this picture, we've already laced the target with the T. I'm going to rewind it a little bit. We first uh, made our target with a T, and this is the real-time view of the needle as it's advancing. And what I like to use is what's called the target view. And you can see that there's a yellow crosshair and a blue crosshair. When you align those two together, you're going uh, in, a, in a correct trajectory. And the circle is the uh, distance to target. So as it gets smaller, you're getting closer to target. And you can see it on the axial view as well. And so we use these uh, technologies to place accurately our needles sometimes in very difficult locations. And you can see as the target gets smaller and smaller, uh, we are closer to the, to the lesion. Uh, another technology that I had talked about, which is uh, a newer technology, not as proven as uh, the radio frequency ablation, is what we call a nanonite, or irreversible electric operation. Basically, this uh, is a series of needles. Instead of a single needle, we use uh, usually about three or four needles uh, for the same size lesion that we would perform with radio frequency ablation. And it, uh, what you would call, simply put, electrocutes the, uh, the tumor. So some people say, why not use this first line for everything? Uh, because the data really hasn't been established with this, but we have used it because the, uh, the preferred benefit is that it uh, minimizes damage to surrounding structures. And so this is a, a video from uh, Andrew Dynamics who uh, makes the nano knife showing uh, two probes very thin probes, usually much thinner than the uh, radio frequency probes. And the issue uh, with uh, a lesion like this is that there, is, there are blood vessels surrounding it, and blood vessels sometimes cause problems as they can cool the surrounding tissue and not allow uh, adequate heating above 50 degrees Celsius. So side-by-side -side comparison with RFA and nano knife. And you can see the nano knife uses electrical current to destroy the tissue whereas RFA uh, uses a heating-based modality and could potentially uh, get inadequate uh, heating of this margin and this margin of the tumor bed due to the surrounding blood structure. This is a case that we performed at uh, Sinai. Well, what you can see is that there is a bright enhancement in this area indicative of a viable tumor. But on careful uh, uh, inspection of this, and you would say just do an ablation, uh, this is a coronal view uh, where you look directly at someone face to face and slices through. You can see that 
right next to the area in question is a piece of, this is a piece of colon or, or bowel. And so potentially we could injure this area. And so the decision was made because we discuss all of our patients in a multidisciplinary setting with uh, surgeons and oncologists, hepatologists, and interventional radiologists, radiation oncologists, uh, uh, that maybe IRE would be a better application in this setting due to the bowel. So we placed six needles. Instead of one needle, we placed six. And so the, the time uh, to perform this procedure can be uh, uh, much longer, several hours instead of maybe one or two hours. Uh, we got adequate positioning of these needles. The needles are the white dots, and we try and make them as parallel as possible. But the good thing is that the patient came for follow-up and had a, a, what we would call a complete response where there was no further enhancement of that tissue. You can see that it's now uh, black in the area. Uh, moving on to transarterial chemomobilization, which is what we primarily use in what we would say intermediate stage HCC. It's uh, basically a minimally invasive procedure that we uh, access through the uh, blood vessels in your body. Uh, the arteries and inject uh, little beads uh, that are coated with uh, high dose uh, chemotherapy. As uh, Dr. Schwartz talked about, the body is unique in the sense that it has a portal vein. Uh, the liver, I mean, is unique in the sense that it has a portal vein and an arterial supply. The vast majority of tumors derive their blood supply from the arteries. And so when we block those arteries off in treating these uh, tumors with chemomobilization, we feel fairly confident that the portal will also uh, supply the normal tissue within that region. And so we can uh, confidently block those off. Uh, where you can see a liver tumor within the, lip, uh, a liver tumor within the body. And uh, these are now the red is the, uh, the blood vessels, the arteries within your body, which are basically like a network of roadways for us to use to get to our targeted areas. Similarly, cardiologists will use it to get to the heart. The blue you can now see is, a, is the catheter that we use, basically a small tube that we uh, uh, use to navigate through the body. And we get to our target area, which is uh, the vessel supplying the tumor. And you can see tiny beads that are now being injected into the tumor bed. And what these beads do, uh, you'll start to see slowing uh, of that blood flow. And it'll clog up uh, those arteries supplying the tumor. And over a period of time, uh, the, the drug that's on the outside will cause destruction and what we call necrosis or death of that tumor bed. We use a, a delivery device called drug eluting beads. There was a uh, trial performed in Europe that uh, showed that it provided improved drug delivery while decreasing uh, systemic effect. And so a lot of uh, uh, patients are worried about the systemic uh, effect of chemo on their body. Uh, but the uh, effects from a drug eluting bead are greatly diminished within the systemic circulation. So things such as hair loss and, and, and such are uh, very, very rarely uh, seen in these patients. And uh, a lot of uh, places have actually switched to doing this as an outpatient procedure. And on uh, the image on the right, you can see that, again, an area of brightness on arterial phase prior to the chemomobilization showing a uh, tumor. And then post, four weeks later, showing a complete uh, black area, showing a complete response from the chemo And another uh, more, I think, representative of intermediate stage, you see multiple areas of bright enhancement prior to the chemo uh, shown with the arrows. And then one month post shows a uh, response where those areas of enhancement are no longer visualized. Uh, lastly, I'm going to discuss uh, what we call radioembolization for the treatment of HCC. And radioembolization is, is a fairly new uh, procedure within the last uh, several years, but has really been uh, uh, refined in, in centers of excellence such as Mount Sinai. And it's a combination of uh, beads that are embedded, instead of with chemotherapy, uh, with radiation. And these are mined actually in Canada, and we order custom doses uh, from Canada. It has an HCE clearance from the FDA, which is a humanitarian device exemption for the treatment of liver cancer. And it's uh, what we call a microembolization. You can see in this schematic a tumor with uh, the radiation beads throughout. So when we use this, uh, we talked about a dual blood supply to the uh, liver with the portal vein and the artery. 
Well, what happens if the portal vein is invaded by tumor? Then if you block off the artery as well to that region, potentially you could cause a lot of problems, uh, such as uh, potential liver failure. And so where the advantage of radioembolization has been is that it's uh, not what we would call something that blocks the arteries off, but it is a, a much smaller size where it um, uh, doesn't really block off the artery. This is courtesy of uh, BTG, uh, because we use the Therosphere product here. And the size of these radioisotopes are what we call 25 microns. Uh, uh, in comparison, the chemoembolization is about 4 to 12 times larger in size. And so these are much smaller and embed in the liver tissue and don't really cause the uh, blocking of the, of the blood vessels that chemoembolization does. Uh, these are what we call a beta emitter, meaning that uh, it's, it's actually quite beautiful. It's not a gamma emitter that you think of with radiation such as Hiroshima, but the beta emitter gets absorbed by soft tissue almost immediately. And so the effects of it are truly localized. They come in uh, plastic containers uh, with lead shield to protect uh, the user as we uh, do uh, quite a bit of these. We do approach almost 300 uh, procedures last year, which is one of the, uh, if not the highest in the country. And once you have access similar to chemoembolization to the target through the patient's groin, uh, then we hook up the uh, box and then we inject the radioisotope to our target tissue. And you can see that uh, you see the blood flow uh, of the, with the red blood cells and we use that against the tumor as the tumor is very what we call hypervascular or has a lot of blood flow to it. And then we'll inject uh, the radioisotope as it, and it'll spread throughout the tumor, and over a period of time, will cause destruction of that uh, of that tumor bed. And especially with portal vein invasion, uh, it's a non-bog, so it's been shown to be uh, safe in its application. Again, another case from uh, Mount Sinai, actually quite recent. Um, Myron will probably remember this as I, I believe it's his patient. And so uh, this is a patient who had uh, this black area in here that should be white, and it's uh, what we would categorize as portal vein invasion. And so this patient is uh, in the advanced category, uh, but on the uh, right image is post Y90 three months later, and you can see much uh, uh, increased areas of uh, basically black tissue, which is death and uh, necrosis, and more importantly, uh, you can see where previously the blackness was, there starts to be clearing with white in this area, and that's the portal vein that's, uh, 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 that's open, it shows that it's open. And uh, you can see uh, the black tissue further on this image. So in conclusion, uh, local regional therapies uh, play a major role in the therapeutic management of unresectable HCC. Thermal ablation for non-surgical uh, early HCC has been uh, effective. Chemoembolization or TACE is uh, the standard for intermediate HCC. And uh, Dr. Schwartz didn't really talk about uh, serafinib, but it's been shown uh, to be uh, the standard for patients with vascular uh, invasion. But evidence seems to be growing more and more as there's uh, what we call phase three trials demonstrating the role of radioembolization in this setting, of uh, which we are also a part of. And then IRE is also a promising technology that needs further investigation. Overall, uh, we need to do more trials to demonstrate the efficacy, but Sinai is integrally involved with all of these trials, and the future seems right. Thank you very much.